Hello everyone, this is Richard here and today I'm with the guys from E3D and the Big Box campaign to talk to you a little bit more about their printer, progress so far on their Kickstarter and answer a few questions that people have posed on the Kickstarter and to me on, on uh, Twitter and via email. So we'll start off by uh, just giving them a little bit more chance to introduce themselves to you just in case you're not aware of the campaign and uh, here we go. So. Um my name is Sanjay and I'm from E3D, uh, traditionally a maker of uh, hot ends, the part of the 3D printer that melts the plastic and splits it out. Uh, I'm David, uh, I'm also from E3D, uh, Sanjay and I uh, kind of founded it back in the day and uh, yeah we've been there kind of from the beginning developing hot ends uh, kind of all the way through the process really. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Greg from uh, Little Box Company, um, done the linear system for the big box. The motion. Um, yeah, so I suppose the, the vision for Big Box is just a, a large, high-performance printer. Um, it's, you know, it's just the kind of printer that we, we always wanted. We always wanted a printer that's a bit bigger um, and has all the, the sort of nice bells and whistles, all the features, while really keeping it simple and making a machine that's kind of nice to work on and nice to use. As someone who loves 3D printers, it's kind of a 3D printer for people who love 3D printing, no way. You can really start kind of start with the base model and work up. It's it's one of those nice nice printers that you can you can add bits on as you go and um, yeah kind of tweak it and play. And that's that was the whole point behind this printer because we didn't want to create like your finished product um, that that you can never play with. Um, so this is very much yeah it's an yeah, editable it's garden. It's one of those machines that I have so many machines that I like I just look at them and go God I don't want to touch anything in there because it's all held on by zip ties, spit and prayers, <laughs> yeah. and I just don't want to disturb any of that, so I'm not going to go and do that cool idea that I had, whereas with this, it's, yeah, so it's easily, simply laid out, logical. It certainly seems to have captured the imagination for the hackable side of things, I think that's one of the unique points of this printer, that you're actually advertising it as a, a hackable printer yeah. from, from day one. Yeah, um, and that's... That was always the point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Yes, there's that philosophically, um, and that you should have the, you know, to own it, you have to be able to get inside and have all the, the source files for all the 3D stuff. But also from a kind of design standpoint, it's not a pain to use. You, know, you can get into the electronics very quickly and easily. You can, if you want to disassemble the whole XY motion system, you just take the top panel off and slide the whole XY motion system out. Uh, it could go on, but it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> Just yeah, design philosophy as well as giving you the source code. Okay, so we'll get stuck in uh, with some of the questions. And since you guys are experts on hot ends, I thought yeah. we'd start there and just explore a little bit about the hot ends you can use, the extruders, and that sort of thing. So first question comes from Tony, and it's how easy will it be, or is it, to upgrade from a single system uh, hot end V6 to a dual or some of the other? hot ends that you guys also produce? Yeah, so it's it's pretty damn modular. Um, we've got you know designs uh, for fitting all sorts of weird and wonderful kind of things that we have here at E3D, but to uh, answer the question to go from one V6 to two V6s on there, um, it's, it's a fairly simple operation now. You probably want to print yourself a couple of new parts or you could probably buy them from us in the future. Um, but effectively, you duplicate this assembly next to it and put on a new carriage that can hold twice as many and, and off you go. Mm. And to be able to access the access the actual the, the, the hot end within that you need to just take the top of the printer off like Sanchez said a minute ago because it's so accessible you can literally just lift lift that top carriage system out, swap it over and away you go. Yeah. And top cover comes off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Swapping between your your light six and your V6 is obviously very, very easy because they've got the same mounting systems in it. Uh, so that's just literally a drop in, drop out. So um, three screws or something. Yeah, yeah. Really nicely swap out of all. And then you can go through the whole ecosystem from your, into your volcanoes. Um, and they are similarly nice and easy to swap out. You know, exactly the same as a V6 system. Um, so, yeah. Okay, that's just one thing I was noticing. Um, is there, there's a minimum distance, obviously, from where the bed goes up. So if you're using very short hot ends, not that you guys make a particularly yeah. short one, but um, I'm thinking the Kraken here, which is potentially quite a yeah. short distance. 
Um, is that still Kraken compatible, do you think, with that distance you've got? Yeah, no, actually, uh, Kajon put, put Kraken on there. I can see what you're saying, there is um, some distance there. There's, there's a bit of play left to go. Um, but obviously, I think that... Yes, you would have with, to with a, put with a custom you, mount. You could yeah, actually you'd, get. You'd yeah. obviously have to put an X carriage on, but Kraken's a really simple thing to mount. It's just got four M3 holes in yeah. the top. You mount it like any other piece of steel. There's no roof mount clampy madness. No, absolutely. Kind of leaving that to the end. You, some somebody will come up with a, a crazy system of attaching a, a crack into this. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure sooner rather than later. <laughs> I expect uh, if they don't do it, I will. So yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, okay. Well, that's that's quite good. It's covered the hot ends. Um, it's, uh, one thing question was on the extruder: is the dual um, system, the dual pro system, going to have uh, direct uh, extrusion like that, or are they going to be Bowden based? Yeah. So early on, we made a pretty tough call on whether to go with Chimera, uh, Bowden fed, or two V6. A lot of people were surprised when we went dual V6. Um, but really it's about consistency um, and being able to use the same settings, nearly the same firmware, everything, because the Bowden system introduces a hell of a lot of variables and differences between the machine on things like retraction and also things like the, the way the firmware knows how to load the material into the machine and having those kind of usability things. Unless you have a very, very specific like software, firmware, probably like almost use a manual if you like to use the dual version then it gets it gets nasty so we basically opted for the sake of simplicity and upgradability it's much easier just to add one more v6 on than it is to buy a whole new chimera um, to go for direct fed v6s yeah. so the the dual version is the same as the single version just two of them yeah okay um, and in the future you'll be able to add Bowden fed um, systems like the Kraken with mounts. I think you mentioned that you had yeah, some mounts on yeah, the back. Yeah. Four motor mounts on the back plate, so there's, there's plenty of scope in there. Yes, there is, there is scope for a Kraken, all the holes are already there. <laughs> 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 going That's what like to hear. Yeah, the is being dangled. And um, there's also there's holes so for yeah. extruders for um, if you, you know, want to put a Chimera or a Cyclops even. Yeah. on that and um, we actually already have a design for that and we'll probably release that with the rest of the source file so if that was something you fancy you know, we'll go for it the design's already done print it out screw it on excellent okay that's good um and sort of carrying on with the theme on the the, the hot end um you've got a a, me a method of detecting your bed um so you've got yeah. a, a method and one of the questions were was um just based on that new infrared system that you've been talking yeah. about um, do you want to just quickly explain the pros and cons and how that works? Uh, so the nice thing um, about the trim is it's solid state, there's no moving parts, no things to sort of flip out and flip back and wear and can, can get caught. Um, it means that we can get the whole system closer and a bit more compact and it's just kind of nice to put together and a bit more consistent really. Um, I suppose the only downside is that with a mechanical system you, you are, you know, probing the, a physical surface, um, whereas with infrared, if you, for example, if you use a mirror, it, it, won't, it won't, won't let you use a mirror, but you can use clean glass, you can have the glass dirty, uh, it's, it's a very tolerant IR system, it uses quite a clever sort of novel principle um, for looking at zero across, I could go on for hours, it's very cool. Um, but, Essentially, what it means is very robust against things like you know, sunlight interference and the colour of the bed and you know, lights around you and things like that. It's so it's, it was definitely one thing that we needed to make absolutely sure that because not everybody's print bed is completely clean. Mm. And some bits are super clean and some bits have got hairspray on you, stick, and all of the things like that on it. And it needed to be completely consistent across the whole thing. And, yeah. and, and that's, yeah, that's been achieved. Yeah. So, yes, you have to be ever so slightly mindful about your bed surface, but it's really, really very simple. Um, it's almost nothing to think about. And it will work with things like Biltac, which has got a sort of a slightly dimpled, mottled surface, that sort of thing? Yeah, it should work with Biltac. Um, we've not actually done full, full testing with that. Um, we should, we've done testing with very dark black paper. Right. Um, like black, very absorbent black sugar paper. 
uh, with, with no issues, no drama there. Um, so I can't see why it wouldn't, but it, yeah, so there's definitely something on the, on the list of two tests. Okay. Um, right, so moving on from that, uh, we've got quite a lot of questions about the choices of motion system, which is uh, one of the key aspects of the machine coming together with the hot end side and the motion system. So Eric was sort of more interested in understanding a little bit more about the gantry system, the way you've set it up, and again, pros and cons there for why you've chosen to go this route. Um, stability, really, and accuracy. If, if you put anything in there that's, that's not really configurable or if, it, if there's any chance of any movement, like if you go with the core XY system, it's very fiddly to set up. Uh, we wanted to make it as simple as possible uh, and accurate as possible, so I, I based the design on what I use with my laser cutter, which has to be a big area, and it's got to be accurate over a big area. So with the big box, we wanted, we wanted basically the same thing, so that's where I took my design impetus from. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and you've gone for four supports on the, uh, the Z-axis. Uh, is that is that overkill? Do you feel that's uh, justified? Yeah, it's, it's, it's both. It's justified and it's overkill. Um, if, if it was wobbly, you wouldn't be happy. So yeah. we thought we'd better make it as rigid as possible. Uh, and four, of, well, you can't do much more than that, really. It's, it, it does what it's supposed to do. Other than the extruder failing or uh, having problems, it usually is the Z-axis that causes most people grief exactly. and concerns. Yeah, it is the their quality. Biggest. Yeah, it is the biggest like pain point. And I've sat down with a, a dial <coughs> gauge and indicators like micro sensors on pretty much every every major printer out there. Um, and there are some good ones. There are some bad ones. There's some better and worse ones. Um, I, I'm of the opinion. I, I think one of ours is the best. You can sit there. We will get a video of the dial gauge just tracking along and showing you because you yeah. can press the buttons and have it and come back and snap on. We're talking about like five micron repeatability. Wow. Uh, okay. In that in that order. Uh, it's spectacular. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And you've gone for um, uh, threaded rods for the the lead screw side on the Z axis. Um, was there any consideration given to either belt drives or, or linear um, lead screws or anything like that? Um, nothing on the belt drives. No. We, we wanted it rigid and. Uh, accurate on the on the threaded rods. Um, we're looking at upgrading up to uh, lead screws mm. uh, to try and get a bit better on there. But it's it, it's still pretty very good as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think people are normally quite surprised how well they do actually work. I know most of my machines. Yeah. It, it's actually quite amazing how well just a normal threaded rod uh, can can work as a as a drive uh, for something as slow as the Z axis. Yeah. Uh, if you do. And manage things appropriately, and you got to watch out for things that you know, threaded rod is a threaded rod does. But if you if you know what you're kind of dealing with, then you can make a very very good motion system. And because we've got so much constraint from the the upright bars, we can kind of worry a bit less about what effect the the threaded rod might have compared to a lead screw, for example. Okay, so one of the other questions that came up quite a lot, and actually people emailed me um, because of the, there's been quite a lot of discussion about the choice of materials for um, the design. We're not going there quite yet, but um, <laughs> one of the big questions was actually how much work, because just saying this is a kit, how much work is there involved in preparation of the materials before that someone can get started assembly? Um, that's something that's yeah. plagued kits, mm. uh, cheap kits, and various other kits in the past. So uh, I've had probably 10 or 12 messages around the same sort of lines of, of asking, you know, what sort of prep work would they need to do? Uh, well, as far as if, well, if, for example, you get a, uh, a laser cut uh, Perspex one, it will all have the, the kind of the backing on it. I've had printers before where you've had to go through and peel off bits of paper off these things. It's just infuriating. Um, so, so that, that, that will be the case. Um, oh, sorry, not with the paper. Um, all of the wiring will be taken care of quite nicely, so there will be no soldering involved. We've okay, yeah, okay. quite kind of asserted with that, with that right from the very beginning, that it will just be plug connectors. Um, as far as building it goes, it takes a, it takes a good day. Um, a good day with kind of you, probably you and a mate helping occasionally. Yeah. Um, I, I would plan it 
something for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Six yeah. hours, you know. And that would literally be from getting it in the box to unpacking it to building it. Mm. Um, we're going to take a long time. We've already started. Um, and we, yeah, we're going to pay really close attention to the build manual and how that goes together. Um, with mine and Sanjay's background in, in education and teaching children how, yeah. to, how to do things. Um, we will, yes, this manual will be a really, really nice, simple thing to use, um, lots of images, um, and uh, yeah, mm. try and kind of limit the amount of text that's in it, things like that, so it's just nice. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good fun, yeah. And it is, it is really good fun, because when you start to build it, you can build it in sections, and then build the outside, you know, with the framing on the outside kind of carcass bit, and once it's there, you're so close, and yeah. it's just the last little bit, and it's, yeah, I suppose it's on, on annoying prep view, you know, with not expect you to sand down any plywood frames, oh, yeah. uh, that's, that's not really a thing. Um, all the printed parts, uh, we're, we're quite good at printing to dimensions and tolerances and we're very keen that there shouldn't be any need for like printed part fettling or filing or picking. Like yeah. the nuts will go into the nut tracks. Yeah. And, like, yes, no the nuts will go the in, or anything no like that. drilling out of yeah. holes, no like picking out of membranes and support materials. Yeah. Or, no, mm -hmm. The parts so you, build, you get them and you put them together. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of unreasonable to expect people to go along and so yeah, like yeah, reaming holes out, carve something so. by hand. Yeah, no. And all the the uh, yeah the plywood frames will all be pre-sanded here because when you know if anybody's ever done any legs cutting before, you do get scorch marks and things like that. So everything will be nice and sanded. Um, so yeah, it will arrive. Nice ready, ready to build. Ready yeah. to build. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, you've mentioned how, how long you think it might take. Uh, one of the other questions from Alex was really the construction, wanted me to ask about the construction of the frames. So obviously, there's a lot of screws that go in. Um, and the first thing you mentioned when I first got here was you had a, a, a slight rethink on the, on the construction of the clamping of the frame. So that oh, might yeah. be really worth um, just going a little bit into more detail, because I don't think you've mentioned that to anyone. No, no, this is new. We're waiting for confirmation um, which we've now got from sort of injection molders and things like that. If you massively over tighten the screws on this you can damage the, the panel framing. Um, so what we've done instead is here is we've used something that's kind of akin to a, a knockdown fitting uh, with a rounded surface and a slightly compliant um, actual kind of slightly soft plastic material um, so that really kind of it's kind of squishes in, grips into place um, and provides a larger locking surface without any sharp corners or stress concentration. So you get a much larger surface area over which you can clamp. And um, I can get that in a full size Allen driver and do it as tight as I like and it doesn't cause any frame damage. Um, okay. And so and it's significantly stronger. It's, okay. it's, it's always that point where you've got sharp corners I mean, we know that from this anyway, we designed it out before, but any sharp corners, obviously, you get fractures coming off. Um, this has no sharp corners now, like Sam was saying about the slightly compliant uh, injection molded plastic that we're going to use. Um, if you see the, the injection molded part starting to warp, yeah. then stop. Yeah. But you can't, I can't screw that to the point where it snaps. It's, yeah. Yeah. And we've done, we've done, we've destructively tested these, um, and they are. Yes. Significantly stronger, yes. You, yeah. can't, you can't, well, you can, but with difficulty. And it'll be the same with the wooden carcasses as well. They will also have these. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's yeah. good. So, yeah, that will that should help with assembly as well. It looks like a bit of an easier job than it trying does, to yeah, yeah, just just fit those stuff. in as well. Yeah, so. so I'm sure you'll get some photos of this later on, but there's, there's, with the tiny um, M3 square nut in there, you'll be able to go through, pop those all in, and then they literally just. Push it and, yeah, and slide screw, up yeah. and get bin. You no longer have to like, push the nut into the Try and hold it in place. Yeah. 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 It just yeah. pushes self, itself into self place. Centering and everything. So yeah. 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 That looks like a very good upgrade. I think that should answer a lot of people's questions about the uh, structural uh, rigidity of the frame mm -hmm. as well as um, the, the worry about possible cracking and, and yeah. uh, acrylic issues that, that people imagine but don't really tend to be too much of an issue if it's built well. Okay, so one of the other questions we have was from Francesco, and yeah. that was about the stability of the printer at high speeds. Yes. Depending on what you believe high speeds of a 3D printer are, uh, it's a good question, but it's a genuine uh, concern um, that you must have thought about. 
Yeah. Um, yes. Speed is a really complex issue with, with 3D printers because um, there are lots of things that come into speed. How fast can you get the plastic to flow out of the print head? Uh, how fast can you move the print head around? How fast can you cool the plastic before you can print on it again? So there's actually a bunch of different factors. People look at a printer and go, oh, isn't it moving around very, very quickly? Um, but if you're moving around very, very quickly, but not able to put out very much plastic per second, then you can only print very rapidly at lower layer heights. So the actual build rate of your, your object may, may still say the same. Um, so, what I will say is that V6 as an extrusion, as a print head, the E3D V6 has a very, you know, on the higher end of performance for material flow output of hot ends on the market. If you want to go high, you can just retrofit Volcano. Um, so the print head is in the, the upper quartile of all the machines out there. Um, the actual motion of the print head, um, so for what a non-printing move, which is when the print head is moving but not outputting plastic, so moving from one area to the other, we very comfortably manage 150 millimeters a second. Um, when we're printing, we like to slow it down to around between 30 if we're really, really taking care and producing a very aesthetically important print to sort of 60 for infill and things like that. But the machine can very capably print at, for example, 100 millimeters a second motion while printing. Um, but you start to see, sort of, you know, on the corners, you start to see a little bit of kind of resonance in the frame, and the corners become less, you know, crisp and rounded, and have little issues on the end and things like that. And that's not specific to this printer. You'll see that with most exactly. most printers yeah. as well. Yeah, one manufacturers yeah. throw around really silly and not useful and not constructive numbers. Mm. Uh, but we we'll say yes, it's a it's a medium to fast three D printer. Um, with the capability of becoming a very fast 3D printer if you add a volcano to it. Okay, so people have seen it printing and uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about some of the things you've printed, some of the stress tests? Um, and uh, this one's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, so I uh, must um, say thank you to whoever uh, posted these in the comments for the live stream on our website because these are two, I've not seen these two particular torture tests, but they're kind of more interesting versions yeah. of the old classics, I quite like them. Um, this one here is a bridging torture test, um, and so it's printed that way on the print bed. Um, and so each of these little spars, these spokes coming out, is actually printed in free air, and the plastic is what we call bridge from the central hub to the outer rim. And the way it does that is the printer pulls plastic through midair, kind of like strings on a, a hot glue gun, if you've ever experienced that. And it, some trickery happens with cooling and flow such that you can pull that plastic bead very tight across there. Um, and I'm of the opinion that Big Box is quite an exceptional bridging machine. Um, and we've managed to tweak it really well because we know a little bit about flow of plastic through hot ends. Um, so that is a 100 millimeter bridge there. And I would say that's about as clean as I've ever seen a 100 millimeter long bridge in PLA. You can actually get them even tighter in materials like PT and ABS. Um, but it's worthwhile well saying that that wasn't a, you didn't sit tweaking for hours to get that. No, it's just, down. yeah. That was, that was pretty. That's um, simplified 3D, and you'd be able to, should be able to do that with the default setting you know, profile that we've, we've provided, and um, put in, slice it up, and put it in the printer. Um, okay, yeah, it's very, it's a, I, in my opinion, very, very impressive uh, capability for bridging, absolutely. Yeah. So it's a fun bridging test as well, yeah. it's very quick, I enjoy it, so thank you to whoever posted that one. And uh, this one is, so is an overhang test, so overhangs is where a surface is hanging out over the bed and the printer has to put plastic a little bit into free space but still in contact with the print basically, so it's a challenge for flow control and also freezing the plastic in place once it comes out the nozzle, so it's a good test of the cooling system on the print head. Um, and so what this shows is that we're able to very comfortably manage over 45 degrees, uh, very comfortably manage 50, 55 and 60 with zero detrimental effect. Um, and we see less aesthetically beautiful, but very sort of utilitarian, functional bridging, way up to, what is it, maybe uh, 65, 70, 75, 80, up to 80 degrees. Uh, for, for bridges, yes, we're starting to see some kind of little bit of wibbliness, looking okay, a bit less than perfect under there. 
but for functional stuff, that's that's still going to be very nice at, at 80 degrees overhead. Okay, well, that's another very very useful test. I think you can uh, test yeah. your own 3D printer to see how, how well it performs. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and in this video point, I'll try and paste links to these. Okay. And also say thank you very much to the person that posted these. Uh, it's a bit of a test. Yeah, yeah. Good stick good this 3D actually. printers. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a new model. So you've got some other ones here, and I was very impressed with this tiny little jump track, which um, doesn't it doesn't really do justice. Uh, I'll do some uh, some close-ups of it, but yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And that was with a 0.25 nozzle. I yeah, think. Yeah. yeah, so that's 0.25 so, nozzle. Yeah, so that's another standard that uh, that E3D have been, been promoting with their smaller nozzle sizes as well. Okay. Yeah, if we're if we're able to get to the 150k stretch goal, you'll get. Uh, you'll be able to offer, you'll be able to choose an additional nozzle for free. So if we do get to 150k, you, you have the potential to choose an additional 0.25 and get that very high resolution capability kind of chucked in. So, push. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, so, uh, do you want to talk about any other models you've printed, or any other capabilities you think that, that are outstanding for the big box? Uh, different so to materials um, yeah. is is one of the main things. It's being able to print, uh, there's, I can't really think of anything that's publicly available that it can't print. Um, so, have you done much with flexibles on t t print testing with flexible materials? Yeah, so absolutely. Flex, full of flex. Yeah, um, definitely. And in fact, we're some of the so obviously big box prints itself. It's a it's a rep wrap, um, and actually some of the parts inside of Big Box are made in flexible filaments. So Big Box doesn't just print flexibles, we will be printing flexibles in a production workhorse environment with Big Box. So yes, it prints flexibles and it does it really damn well. Excellent. So that's actually part of the kit that will be sent out, we'll have flexible parts as well. Yeah, yeah, it's to add in some dampening compliance into certain, certain components. Excellent, okay. Um, and on the material side, uh, people have been asking questions as they usually do about dual materials with yep. the dual print head system uh, and support materials always come yeah. to questions. Yeah. Is there sort of any future plans you've got for your support material? Oh yes, you've cornered <laughs> me there. Yes, uh, yes, we do. Um, we've got this this material um, that we're going to call scaffold. Um, so this is the first time we really really talked about it, and it is a is a heavily modified and compounded PVA type material. Um, so it still dissolves in water um, and it's, it still dissolves in a way. It resembles PVA in, in some respects, but the amount of difference that there is from the kind of PVA we're all used to is, is very, very distinct. Um, I don't have it with me, but I've got a gearbox that I was showing Rich earlier that you know printed a whole gearbox fully assembled um, dissolve away the support material and the gearbox function so that's a really exciting kind of possibility down the line and we're doing a lot more on support materials and that's a kind of that's a focus for us I think I'm excited for support materials. Yeah excellent so big box is really a building block platform for you to experiment with exactly. new materials as well as new hot ends mm. and extruder systems as well. Um, so yeah, okay, good. Um, the only other thing I was going to mention was um, the Raspberry Pi, just to uh, add that in there, because yep. you've got that as uh, enabling OctaPrint and network connection. Yep. Um, just for anyone that hasn't already figured out what that is, do you want to just quickly explain Raspberry Pi and the OctaPrint? Yeah, R Raspberry Pi basically um, gives your printer the ability to network itself, be a bit more intelligent and user-friendly. Um, so. It means that you can add on this camera, uh, webcam, connected to the internet. Uh, and it means that you know, from your phone or whatever you like, you can watch your prints, you can upload and queue prints. Oh, and uh, the printer will kind of basically manage itself much more effectively with less being connected to a computer. Um, and yes, you can, you can add that uh, capability on. We'll probably sell a kit with the, the parts and the cables that you need to kind of stick it on at the end. Um, and it's running the fantastic Octo print by Gina. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's nice. I don't know. I feel like I've explained that poorly. No, that's good. <laughs> that's fine. That's very good. Um, okay. So, is there anything else you want to talk about about the printer? Um, this is your opportunity. 
cable change. Oh, I was just about to say cable, cable management. Cable management. Cable management. Cable management. Cable management. Cable well, cable management. Yeah, yeah, cable management. Like yeah. printers with bad cable management. Where cables just like rub against the sides yeah. and then they and break. excessive lengths of cables so that are all just kind of bunched into a corner somewhere underneath. You put a cover on your printer so that you can't see any of the cabling, and that just seems to be a place to hide cables. So it's all so nicely catches spot. Exactly. So it's all, it'll be all nicely managed, and everything will be to the correct length, and there's none of this like we'll just yeah. hide all the excess wire. I kind of want to get in there and show you guys, but un underneath here, when you look at what, how the wires all go, it's not just a rat's nest of wire. Every wire is routed along clips, yeah. cabled down, has a, and there will be a wiring map. And that diagram won't just be like an imaginary diagram. It will be this is exactly where you place the wire. Um, so you know those beautiful schematics you see of how to connect up a rumba board. There'll be one of those, but it'll be the true thing. <laughs> the true thing, yeah. Because I was very impressed again. Again, you've got um, strain reliefs on your cables for your extruders because they're obviously moving around quite yeah. a lot. Uh, it's not something that a lot of people just forget and just. They yeah. just Connect their motor wires and then have them flapping around. And yeah, and wonder why they the eventually the strain uh, breaks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's nice to see that. And yeah. yeah. And we've got that proper cable chain on here that enforces minimum bend radius over all that access, and it just makes the machine you know, a bit more tidier and more kind of just nicer to, to deal with. We tried to just go through and find out any niggly, annoying things that we found with other 3D printers. Yeah. Um, and, and just kind of either mend them, make them slightly better. Yeah, steal good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> For me, definitely, as soon as, soon as I arrived, um, you showed me a few things that show you're in the final refinement of the usability side of things. I think the cable, the, the uh, spool management at the back oh, is really yeah. neat. And yeah, I'll, I'll take some close up shots of that because. Again, it shows the attention to detail that you've thought about, yeah. not just the 3D supply of plastic, but other people's plastic, their size of their spools, and how people can actually feed that into the machine really well. So, yeah, yeah that was something that really impressed me as soon as I got here, that, that you've thought about those small things that, that make such a difference to the end user. Yeah. Um, it's such a pain, it's like a source of pain for me. It's, it's, always the, it's always the last thought, I think, when people design it. They're like, oh no, now I've got to try and figure out some way of getting the plastic from here to here. Yeah. And yeah, this will take from the, the spools with the tiny little holes in the middle um, all the way up to massive, you know, multiple kilo spools. Um, and Which is what we'll be using in production, actually. Exactly. We'll be yeah. running with a two and a half kilo spool on the back mm -hmm. in the same little thing that will hold a 250 gram spool if you want to. Yeah, because well. so, yeah, you are actually planning a whole print farm to produce yep. the plastics required. Yeah, that print so and ten yeah. printers will be running that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, they're all cutting as we speak downstairs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the print farm is on route. We've got all the parts are in, actually. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the all the components are in, being tested, and yeah, no, it's it's going really, really well. So we are yeah, on track. It's happening. So I guess um, looking forward, it's only right that I should ask um, how how do you feel you're on? Do you feel you're on track with the Kickstarter? for delivery towards the end of the year, just before Christmas. Is that something that you still feel you can achieve? Very much so, yeah. 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 I mean, we've got a, a very, very in-depth Gantt chart that we use um, for planning out, planning out our time. There is a slightly more uh, kind of a simple version on the Kickstarter page, I think. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're on target. Um, we're buying in materials for these, uh, for the first 10, oh. um, and then start well, with already purchased yeah. a whole pile of more bits. And in fact, it was kind of, we, we almost got a little bit of a speed boost because when we sort of you know, we cross crashed through the Kickstarter goal in four hours, which was a scary, but also, well, actually, let's just get going. Let's start ordering these parts from these people and get these things fired up and get going. So we've actually managed to get a bit of a jump start on the on things like the build file, and getting certain things in through the door. Things with long lead times. Like that. Yeah, that's great. That's great to know. Yeah. It's. Um it's good that you're already established, both established companies coming together and producing big box um, as, a, uh, as, a, as a new printer. Uh, a few people did ask, why Kickstarter? Is that something you felt was needed instead of just selling it from the website? Yeah, I mean, basically we just, we don't have the capital to kickstart and, and like boot up an entire 3D printing production line. Um, what you see around you in here is a whole new business unit, i.e. it's the same size as E3D again. Um, plus there's a whole suite of equipment, um, it's very likely that we're going to need another employee, 
Um, there's huge amounts of capital investment for you know, equipment and being able to hit any queues and things like that. And it, but it just it wouldn't be capitally feasible for us. Right? Stuff that um, you know the little box and E3D can you know we can collaborate together on stuff like that. But you know, it's, yeah. so you, you've got to front up a lot of cash. Um, we can we can do we can do some of it, but we can't do it, can't do everything. Um, and yeah, Kickstarter. It, it, not only is it amazing for, for that, for kind of getting you kickstarted basically, um, but it, you know, the publicity that comes with it is fantastic and we can reach a lot of people um, straight away, immediately. If we were to launch it on our website, it would probably have a similar good review, I would hope. Um, but, uh, but it would just take off more slowly. Um, it means that we wouldn't be able to kind of you know, jumpstart it, get a unit like this, uh, get all of the equipment that we need. Um, yeah, all in one big bang, it's, uh, it's cool. Fantastic, okay. Um, any other real question I, I've had a few comments on is, is how heavy is the machine? And I know you've mentioned uh, you can pick it up quite easily, so do you want to just give us a bit of a demonstration? Oh, yeah, if you are. It's, yeah, here's a 16 point. Yeah, I'll pick it up. Yeah, yeah, I'll lift it up. That would be terrible, that's a really bad <laughs> yeah. idea. But I must you know, preface this as I'm someone with, with back problems, uh, vertebrae all over the place, um, but it's, it's an easily manageable machine, there's nice points from which you can pick it up uh, underneath here. And so it's, you know, it's, it's a sturdy old machine. You, know, you can move it around a lot. We're, they're, they're workhorses. They're not little princesses. We, you should, the environment that Rich has seen them you know, in downstairs, they're kind of just there on the table with the hammers and the spanners and, and all of that. And yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not a little girl's machine, but it's, no. you know, it's, <laughs> 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 okay, so thanks ever so much, guys, for uh, answering the questions. It's been really good just talking through the, the big box. Uh, the guys here have been really kind to let me borrow this machine so I can actually do some more testing, take some more videos, and show you a little bit more about how the system is going to work. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll be putting up a few more comments and posts about that uh, over the next few weeks. Thanks very much. It would be cool to get your feedback on it. Can I ask you a question, actually? Yeah, was, yeah, please do. Why not? Well, I was not expecting you to back our Kickstarter, actually. Oh, that was wow. a big surprise for us in the office. We were like, Rich has backed the, back the Kickstarter. Uh, why? You've probably got a 3D printer or two I, at home I, already. I have. I've got, yeah, I've got a fair few 3D printers. Um, for me, it was very much the printer I, I would have designed and made if I was making a production printer. So I really like the open front because it's very easy access. It's the, the right size for a sort of printer that I would want to use. And um, yeah, I was I was excited as you to actually understand a little bit more about it. And you sent me a press release, yeah. and that was great because I managed to write a little article about the, the machine. But I decided to back it almost instantly because it's a machine I really really wanted, um, and it's it's something I think the community will enjoy getting involved with as a, as a community. So there will be big box users that will be using your, yeah. your nozzles and hot end. And I use all of your nozzles and hot end. So yeah. it makes sense to be part of that. So when you produce new, mm. new materials and new things, I can be part of that group. So it's an extension of RepRap, I see. And, and this is a great machine to be using on. So yeah. I'm delighted to uh, kind of The two pies. <laughs> Well, thanks ever so much. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. See you next time. Okay, right. That's far enough. We start now. Sorry, I didn't realise, sorry. That's no problem, sorry, I shouldn't say. <laughs>